Here we are, here we are, here we are. Episode 2. Dynamics, morale and team report. Uh, just a quick disclaimer on the last episode if you've just come straight from that. Uh, There's a few points I missed out. Um, stupidly, I wasn't looking at my notes. Um, just a quick one on the staff, really. It's uh, just to listen to them. I forgot to say this in the last one. It is really important. When you set your staff to do certain things... Um, they'll come to you if you've got good staff and we go into recruitment a little bit on an, in a later episode and transfers the better the staff the better the they will be obviously listen to them they'll come through and say someone so needs a rest someone so feels like this someone so is improving if you listen to them and read what they're saying then you will know next time next time it comes across why they're doing this and you can look into it a little bit more but that was just a quick one from me uh, another thing is if you're starting out and you're picking a club i mean i've picked liverpool but i know what i'm doing on the game don't pick one that's because that, with liverpool they're going to be expected to win the league we'll be expected to get far in the champions league and it's the same with you if you go for your like your madrids your barcelonas your liverpools your man cities your bayern munichs your dortmunds they're gonna want success straight away which could be quite daunting Go for a mid-table club at whatever league you're in. So they're looking to finish mid-table. And it'll tell you that on the um, when you're picking a team, it will tell you what predicted finish they'll be. Go for mid-table every time. Okay, so this episode, Dynamics, Morale and Team Report. So we've just set up. We've skipped our, our meetings. The next thing you want to do is click uh, Dynamics, right? This is your dynamic screen. We've got a very good dressing room atmosphere. Uh, we currently have no unhappy players. There is only one player at the club to be considered very happy. I don't know who that is yet. Uh, there are many players who speak a common language. That's a big thing. Um, every time you sign a player who doesn't speak the language, it will give you an option to send them on a, on a language course. Uh, the managerial support is good because we've just come in. And this is where you're, when you pick the most experienced things... If you were just like had no badges, this would be really red. Uh, T cohesion's red and average, but that's because they haven't played a system that you're going to start playing yet. The next thing you want to do is click hierarchy. Now this gives you the hierarchy of leaders. So you've got Henderson, Milner, and Salah who are team leaders. You want to have these players in your team ideally. You need at least one of these team leaders in your squad. The lack of leaders or highly influential players in your squad means that your team, if it comes up against the pressure situation, they're just going to crumble. So my advice is to try and fit as many of these players in your starting lineup as possible. So for me, I'd probably be playing Milner and Salah, definitely. I'd be playing Firmino, Mane, definitely. And maybe Gigi. So already there, you've got five or six players that are in my starting lineup. Van Dijk soon quickly becomes a team leader. It's just because he's just signed. Allison the same. But actually looking at Liverpool, it's very unusual to have so many influential players. Highly influential and influential. There's only two that are, are over. And that's because Origi's been away on loan and Cater's literally just signed. Social groups is a big one. There's a core social group. These players will play better with each other than if you were to match, say, two centre midfielders up with these. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it definitely makes a tiny bit of a difference. So if I was to play two centre midfielders and I played Henderson and Milner, they're going to be um, a lot more used to playing with each other, a lot more happier playing with each other if I played Henderson and, say, Shaqiri centre midfield. I know he doesn't play centre midfield, but if there was Lalana down there, for example... These two would play better than these two. Same with centre-backs. Centre-backs is a really big one. Uh, I know Van Dijk is in the social B group. But because he's a world-class player, it kind of takes the edge off it a little bit. This is a big thing as well. Uh, happiness here. Uh, it'll tell you here. So you've got your team leaders. All extremely happy. Who was the one who was superb? Bobby Firmino. Exceptional for Momo. You can look through here and see who's unhappy. If you've got an unhappy player who you're never going to play, it's best just to get them out of the uh, out of the squad. And then team meeting. Here you can have a team meeting. Sometimes it's not always available. Um, so we would like to introduce ourselves to the squad. This actually option comes up later on in the save. 
about two or three minutes into the save. I'm very positive about winning the league. They're all absolutely ecstatic. That's exactly the reaction I was after. Okay, so that's your dynamics. Next is team report. And now this is massive starting the save. You've got your strength, you've got your weaknesses, you've got your pros, you've got your cons. You want to look at the weaknesses and you want to try and tick off all these. So we lack quality depth in goal, which I agree with. We've got Alisson, who's the best goalkeeper in the world, but we've only got one other goalkeeper in Mignolet. And is he that good? He's probably a good second, but if something happens to one of those keepers, we haven't got a replacement. We've obviously got players in our under 23s and under 18s. But are they ready to step up? That's what you've got to decide. A better depth would be useful at centre-back. So we've got five players who can play centre-back, but some of them will cross over. Like your Joe Gomez is a defensive, is a right-back, a centre-back, and he can play left-back. Do we need better depth? Probably. Probably. You've got Van Dijk, you've got Matip, and you've got Lovren, who are your big centre-backs. Is three enough for a two position? If one gets injured, you're a bit fucked? Probably there as well. There's not a great deal of quality of depth outside the first team among players coming to the club. Now, I would disagree with that. Um, there is a few players. You could, you've could, you probably got enough players to have an 11 and a bench. But yeah, I would agree that after the bench, you haven't got a lot of players. You get an injury to one of your bench players, you're probably bringing in a bit of youth. Or uh, players who's pretty shit, really. This isn't the best group of goalkeepers in terms of handling. So you might want to look at getting... When you look at uh, building a depth as a goalkeeper, you might want to look at bringing someone in who's got better handling. Uh, this isn't the best goalkeeper. So a lot of the things are just basically goalkeepers. This isn't the best squad in terms of jumping. So we, uh, Liverpool have got a lot of smaller players. Do you want to look at improving that? This is actually pretty fucking good. Um, sometimes it'll be lacking leadership then you've got to go out and find someone who's a good leader someone who's going to dominate a dressing room and bringing a new player in like that it's few and far between look at the strengths though this is nearly three pages worth of strengths here Allison is very good in goal Virgil van Dijk represents superb quality at centre back uh, Mo represents excellent quality on the right wing there is plenty of room in the wage budget with an additional 250k available we'll go into that later on Having one of the best coaching teams in the competition. So if you're Liverpool, setting all your staff to do your coaching will be a good thing. The goalkeeper's reflex is good. What's up here? So look at all the bright greens. Then you go down to the darker greens. The team is general possesses high level of pace. Uh, taking the chances when presented with them are pretty good. An aggressive and committed squad. So Liverpool... Not a bad side to start with, but just bear in mind that they are looking to win the league. Don't win the league the first year, you could be getting sacked. Um, and morale is the second thing on this uh, episode. This episode is going to be a pretty short one. Um, if you look at your squad, you've got your morale here. You want to try and keep your players as happy as possible. Now, you can interact with any player by clicking on his name. Clicking on interaction, then you can ask for his vice. You can praise the player. And if he's just played, you can praise his recent match, his recent training. You can praise his conduct. You can also warn him. You can warn him about, you know, you don't pick up your... Um, you don't pick up your... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, the quality of play, how you play in your form. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, we can warn him with transfer list, we can warn him with loan list, we can criticise his conduct, we can criticise his training when they start training. And that's about it for this episode. Uh, so you've got your dynamics, you've got your team report. Ah, Back onto the team report, we have not gone into this enough. Squad depth, big thing to look at. Now this is telling me 442 because we haven't set a tactics and formation yet, we'll do that in the next episode. But this tells you, it's striker, we have Roberto Firmino is our best striker with Mohamed Dalla. Mohamed Dalla? Mohamed Salah. Then we have Sturridge, Origi and Mane who can play striker. Now when I change this in the next episode, we'll come back to this. We'll obviously have wingers. Uh, so centre midfield, um, all three out of five star. But... A lot of players, you've got Gigi, Milner, Fabinho, Henderson, Oxlade, who can all play centre midfielder as a three-star. Plus four more players. Centre-back. 
You've got Van Dijk, Lovren, Joe Gomez, Matip. Even Fabinho can fill in there. Right back, Klein who's out alone. Alexander Arnold. Gomez can play right back, Fabinho and Milner. Left back, Robertson, Moreno, Joe Gomez and Milner. And there's the lack of goalkeepers. Look, Allison and Mignolet. Or Miglo, Mignolet. Mignolet, we'll call him. Uh, you can change this. So you can go best 11. And it'll tell you your best 11 in these um, positions. So if I was to play 4-4-2, it's telling me to play Sturridge and uh, Roberto Firmino up top. With Mane, Keita, Milner and Salah. With Joe Gomez, Van Dijk, Lovren and Robertson. This is a best 11 for this formation. If I was to change this to 4 2 3 one wide, this is what it's telling me to play. Bobby in behind. That's because Liverpool are lacking a good number 10. Um, it's play him as an inside forward, play him as an inside forward, box to box, box to box, which is all time. I would never play two box to boxes. And like this. Um, that's the opinion. You can get the opinion of anyone. That's your assistant manager. You could ask for the opinion of Steve McManaman, the under 18s coach. He says to play. What's he changed here? He's just changed Milner for, for he's changed Henderson for Milner, and that's about it. Maybe a couple of roles. Uh, you could also show like your potential ability. Look at these are your potentials. You could also do current ability, and this just this is a good thing to look at if you were to sign some players. Like, so we've got one good and one great keeper. Have we got a great right back? No. Have we got a great left back? No. Just because it's Robertson's first year and Alexander Alexander Arnold's breakthrough year. So that's why it says no there. We've got two great wingers in Sadio Mane and Salah. Just hover over them. We've got a good one on the left. Just Mane, but then five good on there. Lalana, Roberto Firmino. Chamberlain can play out there. Shakiri can play out there. In behind, you've got Lalana and Firmino. Up front, Firmino and Salah. One great midfielder, who's that? Nabi K is classed as a great midfielder, is he? That's interesting. So that's it for that episode. Just a short one. But um, an interesting one because although it doesn't seem much and it only takes a few minutes to sort all this out and just have a look, this is basically just having a look at your squad. Um, it is vital that you, you know your team leaders. You know... Um, what players play in the best position. So now when I go into the tactics, I know that I have, I might need to improve on some situations, some areas. I might need to look at maybe playing a different tactic because I haven't got the players to come in, depending on your financial stability. But next, we will be doing tactics. And yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, and join us on the next episode of How to Play Football Manager. Goodbye.